Are you looking to get the M1 Mac Mini from 2020? Not sure if you should maybe hold out and wait for the redesigned Mac Mini of 2022? Stick around for an average user review of the M1 Mac Mini and if you should get one today. I got the Mac Mini back in June last year when my PC failed on me. It was my first Apple product since the iPod Nano. The M1 Mac Mini exceeded my expectations in what it could do. Now, in my mind, I always thought bigger is always better, but this is definitely not the case. Should you get the M1 Mac Mini in 2022, two years later after its first launch? And there's rumors of a redesigned Mac Mini releasing in the coming months. So let's check out the M1 Mac Mini and if it's still worth it today. So real quick, let's talk about the specs in the model that I have here. So this model has the standard Apple M1 chip with the eight core CPU, eight core GPU, and 16 core neural engine. It has 16 gigabyte unified memory, 512 gigabyte SSD storage, and a 10 gigabit ethernet. Now, if I could only choose one upgrade out of the three, I would definitely go with upgrading the RAM. There's so many apps these days, and I'm looking at you, Google, that just gobble up so much memory. 16 gigabytes of RAM in the next coming years will be standard. If not, it already is now. So definitely skip the eight gigabytes and go straight to 16. Another recommended upgrade is to increase the storage. Go from the 256 to the 512 gigabytes of SSD. The standard 256 gigabytes of storage will fill up so fast. And unless you have a fast external hard drive to run your apps, the upgraded storage is a must. It's a decent choice, even though the upgrade is a little bit overpriced. And lastly, the 10 gigabyte ethernet. It's more for future proofing. Many of the internet providers in my area only offer gigabit internet, but once 10 gigabit becomes widely available, it'll be a nice upgrade to have. So let's talk about what I liked about the M1 Mac Mini. I think the first thing I can really mention is the overall performance. For my use case, I primarily use it for doing research, document work, and content consumption. And for the purpose of this video, I'll be editing and producing all the content on this machine. It can handle some video editing work, and even more so if you're using Final Cut Pro or any software designed to natively work on Apple devices. But I'm currently using Premiere Pro, and it's working without a hitch. The M1 Mac Mini is also whisper quiet. It handles pretty much any workflow that I throw at it, and the fans never kick on. But then again, I'm not a heavy power user when it comes to the M1 Mac Mini, so I can't speak for it from that angle. It's also very small and compact. If you need to bring this machine on the go, it's no bigger than a large Tupperware. And there's a good amount of ports on the back. Two USB-A ports, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, HDMI port, two Thunderbolt 4 ports, an ethernet port, 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 port. I know in other reviews, they say that it's a bit of a con because previous Mac minis actually had more Thunderbolt ports. But for my setup and my needs, it works. Let's look at what the M1 Mac mini could improve on. So unlike the previous Intel Mac minis, this one here can't be upgraded on your own. The specs that you choose when you're buying it is what you'll be stuck with. That's why I chose the upgrades that I did. So I would have peace of mind that this machine can last me years down the line. So I probably won't recommend the base model M1 Mac mini unless all you do is document work and content consumption. But if you have plans of video editing, or using any RAM intensive apps, definitely consider the upgrade. Now, because of the M1 processor, there is no bootcamp. So you can't natively emulate Windows on this machine, but you can run Windows on paid services like Parallels. Unfortunately, bootcamp is what you lose out on with the M1 processor. Now for power users that use graphics cards for their creative work, the M1 Mac mini isn't compatible so you lose out on that functionality. Looking at the ports, the USB 3.0 ports only offer five gigabytes per second transfer speeds compared to the USB 3.1 ports that have 10 gigabytes per second transfer speed. That would have been nice to have. Another thing, a lot of users have complained about Bluetooth issues, which I have also experienced. I also noticed this would happen with non-Mac products like my Razer mouse, which was connected over Bluetooth 
but it's fixed now, now that I don't have my secondary monitor blocking my Mac Mini that used to be over here. But to this day, I do experience some Bluetooth issues with my Bluetooth headphones. Lastly, the M1 Mac Mini wasn't primarily designed for gaming, so it can do some light gaming, but not AAA titles. So if you're looking for a machine that can run those 4K titles with smooth refresh rates, you might want to look at a gaming PC. So would I recommend the 2020 M1 Mac Mini today? So for general use, it is definitely more than enough. But for power users and gamers, I wouldn't recommend it. There's also talks about a new Mac Mini coming out in the next couple of months. But if you need a machine today, you can't go wrong with the M1 Mac Mini for the majority of users, including myself. It's more than enough in performance and features. However, if you don't need it today and you want the latest and greatest, definitely hold out. You can wait for the new model to come out. Rumor has it is that they're gonna put the M1 Pro and M1 Max chip in this small compact form factor. Now, that would be awesome to see, but of course, expect a higher price tag. All things considered, I think the M1 Mac Mini is a great purchase. And with the right upgrades, it can stand the test of time. I'm gonna get to work. Thanks for watching.